everybody it's Kelly um, so surprised live stream from me today I'm just getting I'm just gonna get the um, the channel set up here sorry guys so I decided to do a little bit of a just a little surprise live today <laughs> There we go. Sorry, guys. I needed to get my um, my screen set up or I can't talk to you, right? So what I'm going to do today is I was working through, I printed the last um, pictures or got the last order of my pictures that I printed for my album yesterday. And I spent the rest of the morning getting them in place. And then I actually also made an album. Um, today. So I thought what I would do, or not made an album, but um, thought that what I would do is have you guys kind of walk through the process of what I'm saving. That the pandemic album um, question or the COVID album, whatever you're calling it, the documenting has been kind of a question out there on the internet um, lately on scrapbooking groups and message boards. So I thought I would show you where I am with mine because as far as I know now, I have everything in the album that I want to document, so I've put all the pictures in. I did do another one of these as I started this a while ago, um, so if you have any questions, you can go back to that too, but I'll answer um, stuff here. So, oh, that's cool, Michelle. I thought maybe if I went on this afternoon, I might catch a few people, and it's been a little chilly here, um, and I figured it'll be nice and warm by the time I'm done. So anyway, so let's go through that. So. I'm going to go through the album and then at the end I do have um, a picture ready to do. So I am going to actually scrap with you as well too. So some of this stuff you've already seen. This is my opening page. I just pulled up a photo off the internet and then cut, used a cut file to kind of introduce what the topic is for this album. I'll also label it on the outside. This piece of paper here, let me see if I can get this all in. Um, frame for you is a holding place because what I want to do is take all the terms that we learned things like um, social distancing and pandemic and COVID and PUA in my case and lots of other things I want to put a list of those terms here that I'll just kind of hand write out and define because we've all learned a lot in the last few months probably last three months or so so hello hello back to you in Oklahoma as well so that's the plan for this page. Then, now you're, this is going to be hard in some cases. Actually, I'm going to grab a sheet of white cardstock here. Hold on a second, guys. Because what I can do is I'll hold that underneath so you can see a little bit more without having to look through to the next page. So um, what I did here is um, this is just a photo of some paper towels. I want to talk about, I had found some, I needed them for work. Thought I would talk about that in this album and finding them and how scarce things were um, becoming. And this was, let me think. Yeah, this is as things got really scarce and it was impossible to find a lot of stuff. And then this photo here, is me going to work the following day after I'd had to buy some new things to make it easier for me to work, different sanitizing things, that kind of a thing. So that's what that page is all about. So, you know, think about, as you're thinking about th things, you want to think about how your life changed during this time. So, hey, Cynthia, good to see you. And in my case, it's a huge, huge, huge impact on my work. This is, um, speaking of work, is the day that I did go back to work, and um, here's, I couldn't get a hold of like Clorox wipes, so I happened to have some Clorox bathroom cleaner, and you could use that for sanitizing, you just had to leave it on the surface long enough, so that's kind of what this is, and I pulled the coloring off of this. Some of these, by the way, will have videos eventually out there, I just did the voiceover for this one, but I'm far enough ahead, oops, <laughs> Glad I saw that. Um, I'm far enough ahead in my documenting that you probably won't see this for a couple of months. Like right now, the stuff that I'm uploading, I'm uploading for August. And I do that so that if I get busy, I can still keep giving you guys videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So if you're just joining me, I'm going to walk through the pandemic album, how I'm documenting, what I'm documenting, because I have everything done now. And then I'm going to do a layout after that. So sit, grab a you know glass of wine or a um, water or whatever it is because this is going to be a little bit long 
Um, here is a um, page about flat flattening the curve so that would be one of the terms for that other album but I wanted to do this because this can't became very important in all of our lives because this is what obviously prompted a lot of the stay-at-home order so I thought this needed its own page and we saw this graphic a lot in the beginning for sure so that I thought was important um, here is another page to do with work this is when I started diffusing a essential oils. It's something I've wanted to do for a while in my room, but I had just not taken the time to buy the diffuser. And a couple of weeks before this, I ordered it and it finally came in. So that's what that's about. I want to talk about the, uh, not just in my room, but how I'm using, still using essential oils as well to help boost my immune system. Um, this page then was about um, my voting, ab my absentee voting application for Wisconsin and our election. This is important because our election, I didn't do a page on that specifically because it, I mean, it involved the state, but it didn't involve me or change my life. But this was really important because we ended up having an election in the midst in like the worst part of our pandemic um, where people actually had to go out and vote. But I, um, as things started to get crazy, and I tend to vote, not absentee, but I vote before anyway because of my work schedule, but I had heard that things were get, as things got uglier, I voted absentee. So that's what that's about. Um, this is a layout about how life changed for me. I keep hand sanitizer, not just in my handbag like I used to, but also in my car. So that's what this was about, and a lot of us, um, you know, do that and washing our hands obviously became even more important and some of us finally learned how to wash our hands. Not any of you guys, of course, but some people in the world. So guys, just in case you're joining me because I can see a lot more people are coming on, I'm going through my um, pandemic album and giving you ideas and then I'm going to come back and do a layout. So that's what that's about. And I've got a lot of the early pages done because I wanted to scrapbook them more in the moment. I've talked about that before that, um, it helps get those feelings out. And speaking of that, this is a great example of this. I did this page um, live called Closed. This is about the day I had to shut down my practice. This was the hardest page for me to do. There is a flip up here because I had a lot to say about this. And this 3 by 4 card wouldn't have been enough. I Maybe when this is all done and I know that everything is sitting in the right place for sure. I think it is, but once the album is done, I'll know that. I'll probably go back and just take um, an X-Acto knife and cut along here so that flips up so that it's easily accessible um, if it's not though that's okay because those are my feelings and they're pretty personal and raw let's put it that way so okay so then this is um, also that day and Victoria Marie did a zoom scrapping session that evening and oh man that so helped me that day so I think this is important just from that that we started to see a lot of that kind of thing occurring where people People were doing lives and Zoom scrapping, scrap and um, crops and that kind of stuff. This is the first time I saw it. Still pretty early for most of us in the pandemic. And then also Zoom. So we all know how important Zoom and those kinds of things became later on. Okay. So um, this is more quarantine changes. So this is the first Sunday that church went online. Oh, and by the way, that wash your hands cut file and this quarantine cut file from Paige Evans, I think you can get them in her shop. If not, go back onto her Facebook group and you might be able to get them. Those were free. I did not pay for them. So this is a little bit about church and how this is now moving to online. Um, for us, it's Facebook and YouTube. So that became important. Um, last Sunday was the first Sunday that my church went back, but we're only we're still doing our three services, but only outside. If the weather is bad, as of right now, they'll just only hold online. So kind of interesting to see how that is impacting us. And I can see this is not supposed to be tilting, so I might have to come back in and uh, um, just glue some of this stuff down. Those are the kinds of touches I do when I run through the album in the end. Okay. So that's that. This is a little story about starting to do yoga. So when I, um, because I've closed my practice at, by this point, and now I want to try to stay healthy, um, do yoga um, every day, um, run three times a week, or walk. Yeah, that didn't happen, just so you know. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. Um, the, uh, let's just say that I was in a mild depression depression at that point. And I don't think that's anything that is unusual for anybody. Lots of us went through this. And the cat toys are right here because the cats always want to play when I'm doing yoga. 
So that's that. This is um, a uh, a page about supplies. And what I did is I drove into this big city near me to drive supplies off for my stepkids they were actually literally quarantined because um they were supposed positive this is back when nobody could get tested um and so they had run out of things like milk bread um eggs and they couldn't get it because you couldn't get it online at that point and i had told my daughter-in-law when i close the practice if you need anything let me know and she texted me so i did that on top of this this big memory for me is also that i heard on the news as i was driving to the grocery store that we were going to be, we were at a, under a safe ride home order that had happened the previous week. We were going to be moved to stay at home, which meant only going out for essential things. So anyway, this, so this is me loading up some stuff that I had purchased before, took stuff for the kids. And then this is where I stopped to get gasoline. And if you, I'm not sure if you can see it, but I'm wearing a glove. Um, that is the one place that still freaks me out. So I still do wear a glove gas for when I get gasoline. This is a page I'm going to do today. So this is, it's cool for you to see this. This is what I do as I'm working through this album. If I find supplies that I think might work on a page, just tuck them in the, um, page the folder here and I think Shamel showed that years ago and that is what I do when I'm working on an album like this that I actually sort of plan out this allows me then to just come back when I feel like it in scrapbook and this is the page I'll do with you guys today here's another page I've cut cut file this is later that day um when the non-essential shutdown the safer at home order came um came out so hey Moira so just for a couple of people that have joined us I'm walking through my COVID pandemic album because I think I have everything printed and in place. So I'm going to do that to give you guys ideas about maybe what kinds of things you might want to think about documenting, whether you're going to, you know, if you're going to do a whole album or just pages within a normal album or a six by eight album. I know some people are putting in a project lifestyle or just popping in the project life, but I'm going to do a whole 12 by 12 because I have a lot. I haven't counted, but I've got a lot of pages in here. I think it's going to be over 40 layouts if I remember correctly. Okay. So that's that. Um, this is the first online seminar I did that started talking about um, um, the SBA loans and the PPP loans in the U.S. If you're in the U.S., that was some of the assistance that they did for small businesses. Um, and so I was learning about what they were to try to decide if I wanted to apply and what they were. So this is another big thing because a lot of us weren't learned webinars. So... Oh, that's cool, Moira. So another 12 by 12 and 25 pages. Yeah, there's a lot to say here. Um, and this was kind of fun because I love this paper and hadn't used it before, but it's got a lot of home theme stuff on it. I am using, um, it, through here you'll see um, Pink Fresh, A Case of the Blahs scattered through here and another one of their collections because A Case of the Blahs has a lot of good things that you can, little icons and stuff you can use like, um, you know, well, that was interesting. And um, you'll see in another a layout that I just finished that I used a lot of other things that are really case of the blast kind of thing. So anyway, that's what this one is about. Here's another one of Paige Evans cut files. So this is um, the let's stay home one. And then I used an old scrapbooking collection that I bought at um, the scrap a scrapbook and cards event and I'm just realizing that when I do this you can't always see all the way to the edge so sorry about that guys but um, this is documenting how much scrapbooking I did especially early on I was participating in the Calvin Ball challenge as well through the end of March but so that's kind of the end of this but um, I, I don't even remember how many layouts. I don't think I even said how many layouts I had done at this point. I didn't. In the end, I ended up scrapping 206 layouts before I went back to work. So, yeah, lots more. I think there's lots to say, right, you guys, as we're talking about this? Okay, so this is another one of those pages that's talking about scarcity. This is the first time I really saw a lot of toilet paper in where I'd gone later in the day and the aisle was partially full. Um, I know we, when Harmony pops on and I think she's in North Carolina, if I remember correctly, um, it, they still have shortages. My mom in Arizona still has shortages as well here where I live and we're close to the paper mills. Um, I, um, I, I'm, we're getting supplies. So anyway, so I thought that was kind of a cool thing. 
And also the thank you was a big thing because when I used to go through the grocery stores or any stores, I would tell anybody working there thank you because I had the luxury of luxury, I guess luxury of being off and um, being safe and they had to be there. So hey Nancy, um, good to see you. Yeah, and that that is, Cynthia, that is one of the reasons I wanted to show you guys this um, is that this way you can kind of look you can kind of plan your album. And then when I looked at this at one point, I realized I forgot a couple of kind of important things. And you'll see this at the end of the album. Um, and so that's one of the reasons I did this too, is it it helped me go back and go, okay, what kinds of things were important that I missed? Seriously. Seriously. Yep. See, still shortages for Michelle too. Okay. So next, um, ah, this tea keeps falling off on me. So hold on a second, guys. I'm going to have to go back in and get this. I thought I had glued. I did glue it down, but it didn't stay glued down. Um, this is one of those Chamel's letters that does not like to stay down. So a woman in Wisconsin started this thing called Happy Heart Hunt. And you were to, you, people put hearts in their windows so that as people walked by, they um, could see them. It ended up going. And it's she doesn't live that far from where I do. It's a Facebook. It started out as a Facebook thing. Um, and so uh, it went national, and I, I haven't seen the international, but I'm sure on some level it did. So um, that's what this is about, the day I did my happy heart hunts. And I have a my happy hearts for my front window. Fortunately, I have a Cricut, so that made that easy. And this is another Paige Evans cut file. She had a lot of home theme stuff. So, yeah, there does seem still seem to be new stuff every day, doesn't there? Okay, so let's get this back in here. Um, so this is a day, and you guys, I have a Walmart, like, half, oh, oh, that's cool, Moira Rose, that's neat. I have a Walmart less than a half a mile from my house, and so that's why I was at them. Like, if I needed to go out and grab something quick, that's where I went, because I did not want to go out. Um, and at this point, they were all masking already. In our grocery stores and stuff, they weren't, um, and... So I was a little concerned about that. So this is the day that they put up the um, the lines for social distancing, which are actually still up. You can only enter one door of the store. That's really common at stores in general now. It's one of the things that they're doing. So I thought this was really important to get documented. This was eerie this day. Um, you know, when I would go into the stores and they're shelves were empty and this was really eerie and it's weird to think that this is the new normal and I don't want to say we don't think anything of it but it is what it is right this is the day and I'm just going to put my finger over this because I probably shouldn't have shown it um I decided to apply for the SBA the small business association um EIDL so economic injury disease loan for those people who need to know what that is for some reason that's what this day was um, so I just took a screenshot of that for one thing because then I could save my number and then the other thing um, that um, it, it's just a big that was a big day in my life so that'll be something to document the um, the cool part about this you guys is about for it was supposed to be within three days that you heard if you could apply if you had the grant much and and if you were going to get the loan um so i think it was i want to say yeah it was a good five weeks before i heard i did get a small grant which was awesome because it helped with the um it helped m with my rent at work and then um um i just found out that i am I am eligible for a fairly decent sized loan, which I don't need, so I'm not going to do it. I'm back to work. Okay, so this is a documentation um, after my first week or so of being, or two weeks of being off. Here's my fingernails, which are actually growing. Normally, they look like that without, and these are actually a little long because you can see the whites, but got that documented. Um, this is a like our first beautiful day, so I documented that out that I actually did go out for a run. I did not go out for a run again for a long time. On that same day, I was trying to look for the positive as well, besides all the changes and stuff that was hard. The weather was really beautiful this day, so I went out and I was reading a book on my um, on my iPad, um, and I went outside and just read for a while um, before I did anything else. So trying to take advantage of the good stuff about being off, right? Um, this, <laughs> this is, um, the survival kit. So I'm sure some of you can relate to this. You know, I like wine anyway, right? That's not a secret around here. 
Um, but there was a lot of wine drunk during this time for me. So that's what this is about. I happened to be making a dinner as well, but I decided to call it Survival Kit, and I was drinking a really nice bottle of wine that somebody gave me. Um, and then also, um, I I love um, uh, roasted asparagus, so I was doing that as well too. So, oh, that's cool that you did a, a page yesterday, Moira. Okay, then this um, stocking up page is all about the cooking I did. So, you know, obviously this was kind of one aspect of it. Here's another aspect is I, I had time to cook. So I did because sometimes I work late and then I can just pull these things from the freezer. Plus we didn't know what food was going to look like. So I used what I had, got a couple of other things like I needed, I think, you know, a can of tomatoes, that kind of stuff, but um, did a ton of cooking and filled my freezer. And this was fun because I got to use two pieces, old stash pieces, this Amy Tangerine. They were puffy. Um, elements like they were charms and then these um this pineapple which had nothing to do with what i made here but it's food right so so that's what this one is about um this is hard to see but this is the first day that um the cdc had finally said we should all wear masks so um i this is me actually going into a store with a mask i'd been feeling kind of like we needed to but Felt a little weird wearing one, but that was the day. So messy hair and all for me. Um, this is quarantine comfort food cooking. I love risotto. And I think I did this this as a live or you guys saw this because I think we talked about this in some way, shape, or form. So that's that little bit of cooking there. Um, this is Easter Sunday service. So here I am with my Bible and my coffee and the pastor on the TV. By this time I had bought, a, within the first week I bought a Roku box because I have a Roku TV in my scrap room, but I did not have Roku access um, on my main TV in my living room. I just bought a box. So, cause I was like, like I, then I can watch videos and I can watch movies up there and make it easy and church services. So there's that. This was the Andrea Bocelli who I, I love Andrea Bocelli anyway, and he did the Music for Hope concert on Easter Sunday, and oh my gosh, um, that's, um, that's cool. So, oh, Moira, I just read that you did a quarantini page. I'm a little further away and, you know, old and I can't read. Oh, that's awesome. So as I'm talking about, you know, Andrea Bocelli and Music for Hope, quarantini is awesome. So I'm glad to see that. Um, this is a Paige Evans cut file as well that at the time she was giving away for free. I don't know if she, um, still is or not, but I just, I, this was amazing. And in all the sadness that was going on at, on Easter Sunday, oh, this, this was a day. This was the day I closed my practice and Easter Sunday were the two worst days. So Easter Sunday was bad because Obviously, I was separated from my family, so I was celebrating alone, and I did do a dinner for myself that day, um, and my mom normally would have been here, well, would not have been here anyway, but, you know, we talked as well, talked about this concert. I called my sister to talk to her and had to hang up and text her because she was so sick at the same time, because she did have, um, she did have, um, coronavirus. Um, she was so sick, she could not breathe and talk at the same time. So um, this this was tough. This was a really hard day. So this was just kind of a nice thing in that, in that whole memory of that day. So back to happy stuff and quarantine pages, right guys? But I think that's something that we need to talk about and, you know, do that kind of a thing. This is are, I quickly realized at this point I'd been off for about three weeks that I might lose my hand strength, which I did not, you guys. This is really cool. I bought these hand exercises to try to keep my hands um, going, but I spent so much time holding my ATG during this whole thing. I think I was really okay. My hands were fine. I had no problems when I went back to work, so that's awesome. And I have lost, there's my page there. So that's what that page is about. This page is about a Zoom cocktail hour that I do with friends every other week. My high school friends and I are still very close and we do book clubs, but during this all we missed each other, wanted to connect. So every other Thursday night we do a Zoom cocktail hour and that's what this is about. So again, Zoom being important in our lives. Um, this is a photo that's sideways at the moment of takeout. I don't 
usually do takeout around my house. Um, so, um, we, yeah, <laughs> Zoom cocktail hour. Anyway, that's from, from Wyra's Quarantinis. This was um, the first time I did take out, trying to support other small businesses. So I did take out once a week for sure, um, and then um, chose different small business restaurants. So I'm seeing a couple of people have joined us, you guys. Just so that you know, I'm going through my COVID album to give you ideas of what to do my pandemic album and how I'm arranging it and working through the process. I'm going to scrapbook as soon as I'm done with this, which we're, we're getting closer. This next page is um, a page about a thing that Andrew Lloyd Webber did called The Show Must Go On. And I don't know if he's still doing it because I just haven't been um, paying as much attention. But on Friday nights, he released one of his musicals and they did it for free on YouTube. And then in the U.S. it was good for 48 hours. In England, I think it was good for 24. Um, so I have not looked to see if he's still doing this just because, you know, for me, life has resumed. Um, there are still lots of people under the stay at home order, but so it's called the show must go on. So look at that um, channel. So that's what this is about. And this, the page that I just did is behind this. When I put this on here, I'm like, Ooh, that's a really cool paper. And I rarely scrapbook on the back of anything because I don't scrap anything in order. I only, when I do an album like that. So, Oh, thanks Moira. Okay. So it, you think it's over. I kind of thought it might be too because I hadn't seen anything for a while, but it was very, very cool. So um, anyway, so this was the first one I watched was Phantom and I think it was the first one and Phantom is my all time favorite um, Broadway musical or musical, um, I should say, because obviously um, it, it, uh, it also has been on the West End in England as well too. Obviously it started there, I believe. So anyway, I might use this to scrapbook the back. I might not. We'll see. So, ah, wonderful. Thanks. Yeah, see, I think I might need to do this and pull this. This is a creative memories paper, and I have other stuff, so I might need to do that. And then here's an example of what I'm doing, by the way. So I didn't pull this paper for this, but I did pull this. So these, there's these two things that I have to show you. So this is a Let's Stay Home circle. That's a printable from on a printable um, sheet from Ellie Studio. I printed a bunch of them about stuff I was doing at home and tucked those in. And then these are two of the stickers from that, A Case of the Blas from Pink Fresh. And because movie night and this screen are perfect for this, because it was like watching a movie, it was a movie. Um, I am going to use those on this page. So that's a really cool way as you find stuff, you can just slip it in the pages and go, yeah, okay, cool. So you won't forget. So this is the actual layout that I did with the back of that paper. And I just did this one. This is about when it was time to apply for my pandemic unemployment. Um, for those of you who are not self-employed and may not have heard this, but if you're self-employed in the United States, you don't contribute to unemployment insurance, so you're not eligible for unemployment. Um, and when the government did get, did the CARES Act that was the PPP and that kind of stuff, they gave us eligibility for unemployment. Now, <laughs> that was back on the 28th of March that they processed this. This is the 21st of um, 21st of April. That's how long it took Wisconsin to get their systems up and running. And there was still a lot of this that was um, by hand. Honestly, you guys, I just got my approval a week and a half ago and have been paid my unemployment. And I'd been back to work for um, almost two weeks at that point. So I feel really bad for people who needed it. And I had said all along that, um, cause I was going to buy a condo and I had, I was okay. Um, so, um, I kept saying women and families, you know, single moms, families who are living on the edge need it long before I would. And I'd happily wait another 12 weeks if I had to. So anyway, um, but that's what this is about. Other states were faster with this because their systems are more up to date. Wisconsin is using a 50 year old computer system. That's almost my age. So anyway, there's my soapbox for that. But so, and there are still a lot of people, by the way, that have still not received their, um, their pandemic unemployment, which is really sad. So that's cool to know that Moira, that your government is doing something as well too. That's neat. Okay. 
Next page is a sweet thing that a friend of mine did. I'm masking. My clients are also masking, but I need to change masks between clients. So a sweet friend of mine made me 10 masks, five in each pattern, just as a lovely thing to do. And that just, um, it, you know, my heart, that's, that's all I can say. Um, the other thing, and I'm just looking for something, um, and I didn't document something that I just realized. So I didn't document when they extended our safer at home and how I felt about that. That happened, uh, it happened in between this and this. So, yeah. Um, so anyway, um, that's something that I might want to look at documenting. Although I think I have a, I have a way I can do that without having to pull another page in here because I don't have a photo for it. Not that I didn't, I don't need a photo. I'm doing that holistic glossary terms without it, but that's a thought for me too. Anyway, so masks. And then here's the other sweet thing that another friend did for me. Um, she owns a company and she sent me an entire case of wipes and hand sanitizer. And I just saw her last week and she gave me more. Um, and they're all, um, they're not as harsh as some of the bleaches is because the bleach in the products was really bothering my lungs and my eyes, but this is all EPA and CDC approved and EPA and CDC approved cleaner. Um, but I think they're out of a lot of it right now. So it is a, a company called my shield. If anybody wants to look it up. All right, so those were two super nice things people did, and I wanted to make sure to get that documented. This is kind of fun. Um, this is my seven-year-old grandson teaching Grandma how to use filters on Messenger. <laughs> so um, he actually, we were using his mom's, and then he got kids' Messenger. So we would talk at least once or twice a week using Messenger and putting crazy filters on and that kind of stuff, teaching Grandma new tricks. So... I thought that would be fun to get documented because this is, again, something the way that we communicated and did um, fun things. It was a way we stayed in touch. So I thought that was kind of a neat um, thing. This um, is a photo of another eating out thing. We have a, you know, I live in Wisconsin. We're known for our cheese. So this is a small local cheese shop. And I went and grabbed a grilled cheese and bought some of my favorite kind of cheese that they do. So, um... I documented that that day. That's a really wild background, but that's what that is. This is, I documented my nails a lot because this was kind of fun. So as this is when they really started to grow out and I use Color Street nail um, stuff. So it's real polish that you apply in strips and it's easy to do anyway. I have a friend who sells it. So that's what this is about. And I was using fun decals. This, I, I have two cats. Um, you, I, they've made appearances before. And I always suspected that all they did was sleep. Yeah, that is all they do. <laughs> so I was excited because I got to use this sofa puffy sticker from A Case of the Blahs. So I did document that. And I love this paper, but I think this paper is like four or five years, four, maybe not four, three or four years old. I'd never used it. So I finally used it. So thanks, Claire. And we're getting close to the end, guys. Almost th there. Um, more nails. This is the last nails that I could do. So, you know, holding my glass of wine, right? And I went red and they were long. They were actually starting to annoy me because they were getting so long, but I didn't want to cut them until I had to. So that's that page. The next page is, this is hard to see and it's upside down, but this is actually my massage room. The photo came out a little bit blurry, but I'm going to use it anyway. Um, this is my um, massage table and the there's a little plastic um like a mattress pad cover for if your children are wetting the bed, but that has to go between our, our tables are vinyl, but most of us have heating pads on them, but that, so that's one of the new things. So on this page, I'm going to talk about the new things that I had to buy and that kind of stuff um, when I was going to go back to work. So this is the week before I went back to work. This is also the same day, and there's two photos of me wearing masks, kind of testing them out to see which I like, and I quickly determined that I could not wear a mask without putting my hair up. So the, I looked in the mirror, and I have a high ponytail in there, and it's touching my back. My hair has never been that long. I still have not had a haircut, but um, 
I'm going, I think the 18th of June. That's because my hair's so long and my hair's up in a ponytail. I told my stylist to get me in at the end and not worry about it. So, all right, guys. So I'm noticing lots more people have joined us. I'm just going through my pandemic album to give you guys ideas about what you want to document. Um, and then I'm going to do, um, and, um, do a, a layout as well. I have that plan. So yeah, that's what this is all about is what do our new normals look like? What, um, how did things affect you? That kind of a thing. Um, then next page here is when the, the Wisconsin Supreme Court decision to strike down safer, safer at home. So I talked about this in uh, quite a few of our things. Our governor and our majority, legis majority of our legislature are of opposite parties and they fight a lot. And unfortunately what happened here is our Supreme Court struck the decision down and um, they Wisconsin opened back up with no rules and it was crazy. So our restaurants and hair salons opened up and um, now there was definitely plenty of advice from organizations, you know, trade organizations that helped you make decisions about what to do. Um, so that at least helped, but it, it was crazy. It's, it's a, it wasn't still is a free for all here. So that's interesting where there are cities and counties. So um, parts of the state that are still under orders just for the cities and counties. And they have rules like some of them are still um, like Milwaukee just finally opened their restaurants, which is the bigger city that I live near. And their hairstylists are, have been back to work for a couple, like a, another week or so. Um, this next thing is um, a picture of, and I just realized something. Oh, this is when I did, um, I was thinking, I'm confusing this. So this is a picture of my pickup pass for Kohl's. Kohl's um, had reopened to online shopping and curbside. So I want to talk about curbside shopping here. And how that changed and still is going on, even though our stores are back open. Not all stores have opened up. Not all restaurants have opened up. Other people, they're kind of taking a, sort of a wait and see kind of thing. So this is a new normal, um, as we were just talking about that. Um, as Claire said, it's new normal for a lot of us. Um, this... <laughs> I should show you guys this because these are fun clothes. So here I am in my mask, um, ready to go in my massage room. So there's my um, sanitizer and my oil bottle with my mask. So definitely new normal. That's a day to document for sure for me. Then this is, I think it's about a week between that curbside and this. This is the first day that Kohl's actually opened to, I think they're at 25 or were 25% of their capacity. And it was still like really quiet. The reason I was there is I was actually getting flowers at a place next door and just stopped through and took a picture of it. There's a guy waiting for curbside here and the parking lot was still almost empty. So I found that fascinating, but just wanted to talk about stores reopening and kind of, you know, what a thing is here. This is a quick little page. I went to a greenhouse and, um, Cynthia, I'm going to answer your question in a minute because I have a great um, solution for that. So this is a greenhouse that my mom and I normally go to. And when I went here, usually this is Memorial Day weekend here or Victoria Day weekend for those of you who celebrate that because we talked about that at one point. Um, normally this weekend, this whole space is so crowded with flowers and garden tchotchkes and that kind of stuff. And two things happened. A lot of people went to the greenhouses early because they were stuck at home. They also ordered less because their business was down so much. So I wanted to document that and how, you know, you couldn't go just go through when you go through stores. Now, lots of times there's paths and that kind of stuff. So back to documenting it. I don't, I didn't do it on or back to documenting. I'm going to answer Cynthia's question about a mask. For those of you who wear glasses, go get paper tape. You can find it in the aisle that the band aids and first aid um, supplies are there. And I and make sure you get the sensitive tape. It's the blue tape because the regular paper tape is really tough on your skin. I wore it the first day and um, pulled skin off and had all sorts of marks the first two days. And then somebody I was talking to who does eyelashes in um, our salon told me they made a sensitive tape. So it's blue. So get the blue paper tape. Um, and I think it's made by something like, not neoprene, but or next care, 
if you're in the U.S. makes it. It's N-E-X-C-A-R-E. -E. If you can't find it, you can probably order it online. So take a strip that covers from about here to here on your glasses, and it goes halfway on your face, halfway on your um, mask, and just mask and just put it over the top. I use it anytime I'm wearing a mask. Your glasses will not fog if you do that. So there's a big hint. A friend of mine who's a... Um, a uh, nurse practitioner told me about it and it was the best hint I got it, nothing else has worked for me so it looks crazy but it, it works and my clients don't look at me anyway when they're, on their, when they're having a massage okay so next thing here um, I cover most of this up because it has information about my unemployment this is the day that my unemployment came through so that's what that's documenting um, we talked about that a little bit before so this is the piece that when I was going back through my album, I realized I forgot. And I'm just going to put this at the end because it's kind of where it comes anyway. And I can kind of talk to it. Um, so this is a picture of the CDC website. So I use this a lot in trying to look up things to go back to work, how to behave, that kind of stuff. This is super important. Um, you know, they put a lot of the standards out who and the CDC, in the case if you're in the United States, put out a lot of standards of how you keep yourself safe. So that's why that's important. This next one, if you're in the United States, I don't know about anywhere else, but you'll know about these four people. Um, there was a White House task force for COVID-19. Um, so this is the vice president. This is Dr. Fauci, who a lot of people of us have heard of. And now I, Deborah Burks. And I can't, this is our surgeon general. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. So I want to talk a little bit about this task force and watching daily press conferences, because that was a huge thing, you know, to see what was going on with the virus, what they were recommending, because things were changing on a daily, if not multiple times a day time. So I thought that was important because that was one of the places that I got that information. The other place I did is, so this is the Wisconsin Badger Bounce Back website, and I've got, I'll pull these out because you can't see them. Um, this is the website. Here's, we're using, they're using what are called gating metrics, so in order to decide when reopened before the Supreme Court did that, there were metrics to use. Um, so I grabbed pictures of, and they used red for yes, it was a go, green it wasn't, so I I pulled all this together because I want to talk about that because I'm actually still using gating metrics in um, my life because I have to decide if and when I'm going to let my clients stop wearing masks and that's what that's about. So this is still currently going on for me as well. So I might have, I, I would have room to do one more page in here as things stand right now. So maybe once I let my clients stop unmasking, maybe I'll add a little page in here and that I kind of like that idea. So as I'm talking to you, I'm going to pull this out. So what this page is for is I grabbed some paper here and this is the page. I want to be able to end this album with a page about my feelings um, and just how how scary it was, how frustrating it was, how, 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 and talk about that. And um, obviously I've covered a lot of the new normals. I have covered some of those feelings in the rest of the album, but that is, um, you know, that'll be kind of it. So that's why I put these two in here because I just happened to be looking for lined paper for something else and saw these two pieces of paper. This probably is not big enough. And, you know, I'll see um, how that goes. I could go back and just do also a grid paper like I did for here because I also have Ellie's studio makes a lot of grid paper. So you guys, thanks for hanging in there. I don't even know how long we are right now. Oh, 43 minutes. Yes, and we haven't even started a layout. So hopefully you guys are scrapbooking or doing something fun. Um, but hopefully that helps give you some ideas about things that you might want to get documented, the way you might want to look at things, um, you know, any stuff like that. But I think I don't want to lose how much this changed life. Um, and, um, I think, I think this is a great way to do it is to go back on a daily basis. I knew I was probably 
going to very quickly that I was probably going to do a pandemic album. So I very specifically started taking photos of things. Um, and then let's just talk about documenting hard things. So not everybody does, and that's okay. If you don't want to do that, A-okay. It, it, you do what's good for you with this whole thing. But obviously this is pretty life impacting, and I think it's going to go on for a long time. So just so you know that. So that's the album. Let's get scrapbooking here. Oh, the other, so the other thing I wanted to talk about is, um, it, it, this is worldwide now, but the other thing that I'm not quite sure how I'm going to handle this yet is the impact of what's going on, um, with the, um, documenting what happened after Joy, George Floyd, um, died. And I'm just going to leave it that I'm going to leave it there because I don't want to turn this into a, a question of, I don't want to debate about that. Um, and I've seen that happen in lots of places of, as lots of us had, but obviously no matter what you're thinking right now, it's a big impact on all of us. It's, it's going worldwide. Um, and, um, there's positives and negatives through the whole situation. So I want to get that documented. I, but I think I'm going to need to do a page on that and I'm not sure how I handle that. I also lived in Minneapolis. I went to, I went to college four year four for four years, um, about an hour away from Minneapolis. And then I lived in Minneapolis for a couple of years as well before I moved back to Wisconsin where I'm, where I was from. And so that city has my heart. And, um, even from that, it's hard to watch some of what's going on because I know it's impacting people there um, in neighborhoods in ways that are going to be hard to come back from. So anyway, so that's the other thing is, is I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. Obviously, I need a big, I need a big page of um, journaling to be able to journal. So, so that's another thing is, you know, that right now that, you know, do you document that or don't you? And I think for me, I want... I want important things in my scrapbook, um, how they important things worldwide, um, you know, those, all those kinds of, all those kinds of things. Um, I, when 9-11 happened, I was scrapbooking, but not to the point that I do now. So I have not yet scrapbooked 9-11. And the hard part about that is, is because I didn't, it's going to, you are, our emotions from that day on some level have been dimmed because we're further away from it, right? So um, maybe next year um, would be a good time to do that um, because then, you know, that's an anniversary and maybe that'll be what I'll do, but maybe I'll do it before. So anyway, let's move on. So we're going to document um, going to the gas station with our glove on today or my glove on anyway. And... I liked this paper. This is Pink Fresh Studio. It's from 2017. So this is a case of the blahs. And this is the messy paper. I have another sheet of this that I'm cutting those out of. But I like this because it looks like splatters and germs. That's that's what this looked like um, to me. So that's why I want to use that. So I'm going to grab that paper and just cut the border off. And then how I'm making decisions about what to use is as I was going through this, I found this, um, these puffy stickers and there's one here that says blah and another one that says real. And they're both have some of this green on them. So I think what I'm going to do is use those stickers on here somehow. So I wanted to bring in the green. So that's how I decided what to do here. And again, I'm making this easy on myself because I've already got this done. Now, here's the one thing though, is I definitely want some sort of um, probably journaling card because you know, that's what I use. <laughs> Not all the time, but a lot of times. Um, I probably want some sort of journaling card on here because I want to talk about what this is and what was going on at that time because um, you can just document this with photos, but for me, I also want to document it with stories. So I was thinking I was going to do that. So this one says it's not all good and that's okay. And this one says documenting the messy stuff. Um, so that's what, that's, 
um, I want to use those on this too. So yeah, Claire, that is true, isn't it? It's trying to find the balance so that you get to see it. And I think that's why if you're doing some sort of pandemic album that doing what I'm thinking about doing, which is documenting stuff as much as you can in the real time, especially if it's hard, really hard stuff. So you don't lose that emotion, but then you can always go back at the end of your album with another page and just talk about that with some perspective and maybe how life has changed, what that looks like, you know, that kind of a thing. That's kind of where I am anyway, right now. So I'm kind of toying with what I'm going to do here. <laughs> That's a little elegant for this. And there's no gap. This, this card says gathered together. Yeah, there's no gathered together. I do like this today card. I think this might be it. And what I'm going to end up doing is probably using a couple of different greens here as I'm looking at this. Yeah, let's use that today card because I kind of like the idea of that. I'm going to chop off. This is um, Lawn Fawn, Knock on Wood, and it's the dining chair paper. But this is probably, this is from 2017. So I don't know if this is available anymore. And there's a smaller version of that and a larger version. So let's get that pulled together here. And so I'll have just a little border here. Interesting, I'm not quite sure how to make this work because that's the same green. Now, I do have this. This is from Michaels. Um, there is not a lot of contrast there, is there? So the question is, do I grab some other green or maybe a stripe and put that sort of in between or a black and white, which I could do some sort of black and white pattern there as well. Um, and I kind of like this one. So I just went up and I grabbed this. So this is an old piece of paper from the Scraptastic Kick Club. I have no idea where I actually got this. Um, this is kind of cool too. To do it like this but this this feels happy to me and I'm not sure that that's the message I want to send here because this was not happy because I could kind of chop that a little bit and put this on here the reason I picked this up is because I like this side with these kind of chaotic wonky um, chaotic and wonky chevrons so I think that's the side I'm going to use here. And now I also think that what I'm going to do, let's see if this will work because I do want to get these on here. But I think that won't work that way. So I'm just going to trim that off. And maybe these can, so this can work here. Maybe we can do, so there we go, something like this. Obviously now I'm going to have to use some ink, right? But you knew that that was coming. So by the way, guys, thanks for hanging in there with with me. If you expected to do the, um, to see a layout right away, and you did not. Um, I will, when I'm all done documenting this, but my plan is to go through and um, do a layout, uh, do a uh, album share. So you will see the whole album as well. Just trying to decide how far away I'm going to go here to just layer this. This would be a good thing like if you um, if you like mixed media, um, it would be fun to do that on the back of this page. I'm not going to today. I like mixed media, but um, <laughs> this is a while ago, probably, I don't know. 10 years ago, maybe not quite that much. I was using some um, like color shine, it wasn't color shine, I don't think, but I was using it and I didn't get the bottle capped and I spilt it all over the carpeting in my then scrapbook room. And I like freaked out. <laughs> It was bad. Okay, so I don't want this. There we go. I didn't want that to um, 
like this line and this line to be the same. And I'm thinking that I'm going to use this whole green piece here. Just under this a little bit. And I, I like I, I was gonna I said I was gonna ink edges, but I haven't inked anything yet, have I? So I better get that out now before I start getting too far and then making it really hard for me to ink things. Um, I think I need another um, gray flannel. Oops, and actually that won't go all the way. So I'm not going to ink that edge because I'll have to chop that somewhere. Decide where I'm going to chop it. I'm going to probably wait a little bit to do that, though. So let's just get that down, and then I need to ink these edges. Isn't this fun when this happens? <laughs> I do this all the time, despite the fact that I ink, you know, most layouts, I still do this where I forget. And I do like it, like on this paper especially, because there's a white core to it, so it really helps with that shadow effect when you're layering. Okay, so there's that. And I have to remember, I have two other things to get in here. This, I've officially run out of excuses, would be good on that layout that I'm doing of um, myself running so hold on a second guys while I'm thinking it I'm just gonna pull it off oh and I just saw there's a sticker from Amy Tangerine I might get in here too otherwise it can go in with that as well too but we'll we'll see what happens anyway um that's how I think okay so I found that I'm like oh yeah let's let's do something with this so I'm not sure if I want this to go all the way off the page or just um, cut it here. We'll see. See what kind of mood I'm in once I get these determined. And I need to ink that green paper yet, don't I? So this will be kind of fun to get this done. It feels good every time I do another page in that pandemic album because you really see progress versus the way I normally scrapbook. I don't really... I mean, I see progress in the fact that my um, photos are going down in my, or I scrap more photos from my photo sleeves that I keep things in, but you don't see it quite the same way as you do in the in albums. So, okay, so I think I had this here like this, and I think I definitely want... So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut it here for now and see if I like that. And I just made my life really hard because, of course, I'm cutting it. And it may or may not end up straight because of how I had this. Okay. So back here again. Now that does leave me with a whole chunk of like white here to deal with. Like, there's nothing there and I'm not loving that. So I think I'm actually going to bring this in more. Sometimes you just have to cut it to figure it out. And that sometimes happens. Um, Nancy, I used to print all my photos at home, because, but it's so expensive. I have a really nice photo printer that I don't anymore. Um, I send them out um, a lot of times just to Walmart, honestly. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm doing this to document, but part of it is, is an art thing for me or creative thing for me. So I'm not all crazed about... Uh, are they, you know, the quality of them? I know that that might sound awful, but it's true. So, but like today when I did my, when I pulled my photo order, because I, I got a photo, picked up a photo order yesterday, I realized that when I showed you the um, White House Task Force, that didn't print because it was, I use Adobe Photoshop and it was a Photoshop um, file, not a regular file. So I had to go back and print them. So I do print stuff from home just not everything because like I think I had an order of 100 and I don't know 
15 photos or something like that and then I forgot I wanted to double one because I want to use it in two different places I, one of them is <laughs> my grandson's hair was so long and he's like wow my hair is really long and I really like it and then he like looks like one of the Beatles seriously um, and then his mama asked him a question if you have kids there's a question around questions around going right now about what is coronavirus and his mom did that with him so I want to use that photo on there because it was taken about the same time as she asked him the question so I forgot to print a second one of that so I just printed it but most of what I print I print I just pick up it's kind of plain that kind of I like oh and I have so I have to remember I have this and I have this that need to go on here as well too before I get too excited about what I'm doing Okay. Yeah, no problem. Um, and when I, I do use Photoshop to do some editing on my photos. I don't do a ton of editing, but if something is like the lighting is kind of wonky. Um, oh, by the way, guys, on Monday, I don't know if I talked about this. My nephew had his baby girl, so that's exciting. But as I was looking at some of the photos they sent us already, they were really, really yellow. So I took Photoshop to kind of change some of that, use Photoshop to change some of that color. So trying to think, maybe that there. Nope, I think it was better the other way. We're gonna just pop that reel there, get my, you know how I like to work in that diagonal. Although this isn't gonna be completely a diagonal, I guess. So this is one of those things that when I first started scrapbooking, I was not, I couldn't do very well. Like I wanted all my greens to be exactly the same green. And here I'm using three different ones for sure. That one too, I guess. Um, but I've gotten over that. <laughs> Finally. As long as they're green. Okay. So I think that's where that's going to go right now. I need some more embellishment. I also need a title there too and maybe I don't need a lot more embellishment I don't know but I would like something down here I don't think the chipboard okay, I've got this bummer here but I think I want something with color and this is the chipboard from that set and I'm not seeing something to use there just gonna grab well we all know I have Ellie studio stuff right but I'm kind of looking to see is there anything like I've got a green ampersand here that maybe I'll just use because it matches it doesn't have to mean anything and then I just realized I have this little this is more of a spring green I have these little labels um, and maybe that could help like blend this one might be kind of long and big. What I was thinking about doing is like maybe tucking this up underneath a little bit. This is hard because they're thin. But I'll turn this and see if I can figure this out. get another green in there and then I have that other smaller one too and then a lot of times if I do this I'll just put a little note about where I am that kind of thing on here let's see if I like this once it's turned around and this is on here I feel like this is a little bit close maybe this goes up at the top <laughs> if I can get it off this is bad part so when I can't do this, I use my, this is my original Cricut spatula. And now I have the air, but I have the original, which that was the expression, I think. I have a hard time remembering that. I definitely like this one better up there. For sure. And then maybe this smaller one. 
can come down here, kind of underneath that. My okay, I should probably get this glue done. This is a printable from Ellie's Studio, by the way. I can tell because it's thin versus one of the three by four cards. Okay, so what I'm thinking here is again tucking this kind of under and then putting this up on. Foam tape. Sometimes it's hard to think and talk, especially when I'm doing a live. I'm looking back at this. It was so cold too when a lot of this was first going on at first. It took a long time for spring to get to our area. I'm trying to get this semi straight and it's not working. There we go. Now we'll just get that down and then grab my foam tape. I do have another roll of this in the waiting in the wings for when I get through. Oh and I just found some green stars. Maybe that'll work here too. This lovely day ticket. So this is my little bowl of things. I could probably find black stars as well if I wanted to use those green stars. Okay, so now that kind of makes a little bit more sense. Um, they don't have a, this green, I think, in another... You know, I don't have any more labels here. But let's see. That's washy, so that won't work. I'm just going to grab my little box of goodies here and see that's kind of nice because it's introducing another shape up here which actually is already kind of there I really need something up there because that that's that circle let's see if we can find something to work with that real now this I can always do you know I can always um, just pop it on um, like do some enamel dots or something like that up there as well here's one that says awesome I think oh right now right now is actually good but that's too big That, however, is not, and I kind of like the way that looks. It gives it a reason for sitting there. So, okay. I just think we got that answer. Thank goodness for these box of cut aparts and printables. They save me a lot. Okay, so now I need to ink this and then cut it. And I didn't really need to ink that top, but that's okay. And then I'm just kind of making sure that lines are not, like these lines are not the same place that those lines are. And I could add my date up here. I'll have enough room to do that if I choose to. And then sometimes when you do this kind of thing, sometimes I'll add like in somewhere else as well, but that uh, feels like too much to me. And I'm, I think I'm going to clean this up and take that off of there as well too, at least for now. That still is kind of bothering me where it's sitting. Okay, so I actually like the idea of this sitting here because it reads today, blah, but then it needs to go up on some foam tape if I'm going to do that, which also means this reel probably should too, so that I have something in each of my sort of cluster areas that's up on foam tape. Oops. 
So I think I had that down a little bit further so I can pop the date on up there, which, okay. <laughs> yep, you saw me do it, of course. Forgot to look at the date. Oops, and this guy is a little wonky here. There we go. And then this one. So, guys, my current binge watching on TV is Outlander. Um, I have Netflix, so I saw the first three seasons. And then, so there's season four and five that I had not seen. And I kept going back and forth about should I get stars just to see it, just so I'm current. But that means, you know, since I don't have stars all the time when the next season comes out, blah, blah, blah. Although really, if it's $9.99 a month, that's less than the price of a movie um, to do that. But when I got my Roku box, I had forgotten about this, a little offer came out that you could get it for free for 30 days. So I am currently binge watching <laughs> a lot of Outlander, which is awesome. Okay, so I forgot about that I had that little ampersand there. So let's get that up on a little bit of foam tape, and then that can be my piece for up there. If you have not seen that series, I keep telling people it's awesome, and yes, there is sex and that kind of thing, less so as they get older. Um, but even I know people who are watching with their husbands because there's a lot of history in it and like history that I don't know a heck of a lot about especially early on because it takes place in Scotland and there's battles things like that as well so um, I, I know husbands that are enjoying it as well and not for probably the same reason that their wives are okay so that's looking good and this really does not want to stick properly does it okay now I think I got it Right. I'm trying to see, do I think I need? Hmm. Interesting. Maybe. Let's ink this edge. That gets a little more green up in there. And a circle. So that we have a different kind of element. There are, there's no circle down here, but I'm okay with that because I think I'm gonna put some enamel dots on this. I might not do those stars. needs to be cut off so I'll see if I like yeah I actually do and now this upper edge up here needs to be inked on both of these labels which helps finish them off when you cut them <laughs> I like how you're laughing Nancy um, oh guess what else we need on here guys hmm a title might be helpful <laughs> and I think I'm gonna call it gloved <laughs> like, like Michael Jackson or something like that I don't know and I'm thinking black, just because there's a lot of uh, black splatters and things. So let me do that and see. I, I think it needs to be big. That The black needs to be big. Big alpha, if I can find one. I have lots of smaller alphas, but not as many big. Oh, this could be kind of cool because that's the black and white. This feels a little happy, but might work. Just looking to see what I have. You know, looking through every black alpha I own. This is probably a little narrow for what I'm thinking. Okay. This is the album I was album. <laughs> Okay, thinking about that pandemic album, that this was the alpha I was thinking about. It might be too big though. So let's see what that looks like. I want the title to be there. So. It just might be really wordy and I might not even have enough room for this actually. Too big and I think too much then anyway as I'm looking at it it just feels like it's taking over the whole layout there which I don't want 
one. So let's see if I have enough to do this one. I do. Um, interesting, they don't have a capital. Oh yeah, they do have a capital L here. So let's try this and see. This might be a little bit better too, just because, um, yeah, this won't work this way, but it could work capped and small letters. And I think the fact that this has kind of a black and white, that is a little bit it's still black but it's I think it's not taking over the whole thing and this one I can get the word glove done the other thing I like about this is this is a little bit taller it like lands right in between the top of this and the top of this so this is what we're going to use And then, of course, I will have lots of documenting to do, you know, words. That is one of the things. So, if, like I was saying before, you can document this a pandemic album or any album just using, using photos. But I also love to write. So, just journal and that kind of a thing. So, it's kind of nice to be able to do that on the page. And for me, I find that writing, and I've talked about this before, helps me get out feelings. So, that's a good thing to be doing right now. Because it's all about feelings, isn't it? Okay. All right. Yeah, that was perfect. I think if it had been the, uh, the black and white letters that I showed you with the little dots, although I love those, I think it would have been too much white and we wouldn't have seen. Uh, it would have gotten a little bit more lost. And I really wanted that title to be oops, um, an important element in here and I think the fact that um, th this is so wonky it's making the whole layout look wonky even though it's not so question now is do we just add these stars in because I have them and I can I don't have enough to do them everywhere I only have the two green ones so the question is, I have a lot of areas they can go in. And where is the right area? Yeah, I think I'm trying too hard. This is not it. So Moira, what did you love? Did you love the title or did you love the stars? I missed it. Sometimes if I'm looking, I miss your comments as they come through. Or the layout. <laughs> I am loving how the layout looks. Ooh, here's another different kind of green. And I like that. Let's get this on here too because it'll... Okay, thank you. <laughs> Me too. I did not love the stars. So let's use these because it's just another green. And I'm going to try to use some of these big ones. These are from Eyelid Outlet and Brad's. And their big ones are really a lot bigger than like big, big ones normally are. Enamel dots. That sounds awful. Sorry, you guys. Bigger than normal enamel dots are. Okay, so we got big one there, big one here. Um, I could add maybe more even. I certainly have plenty of space to get these in here. Okay, so now I need a third, and this guy needs another one, and I think another big one here is too much. Yeah. So this all kind of scatter some of the, so it's either, it's weird, there's no size, it's this, this and then this tiny little size and that's it so like they really went all out when they made the big size okay 
Okay, that one kind of makes sense there. And I'm loving this other green here. Oops. I just found an H attached to my stomach, you guys. <laughs> I didn't even use an H. Where did that come from? That always makes me laugh when you find things attached. Okay, I think right there. So, you guys, I think that's it because now we have that. But, I, like I said, if you were really into mixed media, I think it would look kind of cool, like, back behind all this to do some of that, too, um, to get that in. I'm going to leave this blank. I, you know, I wasn't sure at first, but I like the relief of that, and I like, <laughs> thanks, Moira, I like how it um, is wonky and... Um, wonky kind of like the time was wonky and unsure and germs splattered all over and um just doing that and i do when i scrapbook sometimes i really like to make sure that i get stuff like that like symbolism in the product you're using because it makes me um think about a little bit more about what i'm doing when i look at it 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 reminds me of things like I will forever look at this now and think that reminds me of germs because I know I do because I can go back to layouts that are I've been scrapping since 2000 really really scrapbooking since about 2006 2007 I'd have to go back and look when I did my very first layout but about that time I did some before that but I was working on more project-based albums not kind of exactly in the style that I scrapbook. Well, not exactly, but using products like this. So um, that's cool. But I love how this looks. And I could, um, you know, if I wanted to, if there were numbers here, I might do something like adding in like a little, because this is March, like I could do something like add in March down here or something like that so it takes up some space that kind of a thing if it was in the same font or if I had numbers but I don't so although I do have a cute little this isn't going to I'm not going to put that out there but I have this cute little asterisk I think it's too much. Okay, I was trying too hard. Um, and there are there are um, cute little enamel dots here. This is a an old. I didn't do this. This is an old making memories alphabet from two thousand eight. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's been hanging around a long time. It needs to get used up. So anyway, I think that's it. Thanks you guys for hanging out and um, listening to me ramble about the COVID album and um, all that kind of stuff. But hopefully I've given you some ideas and, you know, I'd love to, um, you know, hear, see about what you're doing most definitely. So thanks, Nancy. Um, now I am going to go out my peonies, which are, ooh, it's hard, but well, actually my favorite flower is tulips. Peonies is a really, really close second, but the good news is, is that they bloom about a month apart here so I can um, I can um, I can say they're my favorite summer flower so anyway my peonies are blooming and I want to go cut them because it's supposed to rain in two days and I want to bring a bunch of them in because they'll get destroyed otherwise but thanks you guys and I'm glad that I was able to give you some ideas about um, what you know, to help you scrapbook your way through this as well. So you guys have a great rest of your Sunday. It was so nice to see all of you. And I'm sure I'll be back with another layout again soon. Bye, everybody.